I've never felt power like this before. Superhero movies and comics like X-Men and Spider-Man have captured the fantasy of being superhuman. Many cultures throughout history believe that certain people possess special powers or abilities that transform them into superior beings. Shifting our focus to the present day, many people strive for exceptional performance. Some go as far as taking performance-enhancing drugs, engaging in obsessive behaviour, or simply attempting to improve upon their natural abilities through focused practice. In the world of sports, some athletes have been able to push the limits of what is possible with superhuman levels of athleticism and speed. All human beings are 99.9% .9 identical in their genetic makeup. Differences in the remaining 0.1% hold important clues about our individuality, strengths and weaknesses that make each of us unique. In the last decade, new technologies have considerably improved scientists' ability to locate the genetic variations that distinguish our DNA from that of other people. In some instances, these genetic differences give rise to diverse superhuman abilities. There is growing interest in identifying genes associated with special abilities, many of which seem to be inherited. Dr. George Church is a Harvard professor and geneticist who is putting together a list of genetic mutations and alteration possibilities that could lead to superhuman abilities. We have some examples from the myostatin gene. There's LRP5 alleles, which can make your bones much, much stronger than everybody else on the planet. So rather osteoporosis is kind of the other end of the spectrum. And they're so strong that they can have uh, issues with uh, surgery. PCSK9 is something that, that, that shows that the lower your LDL cholesterol, the better off you are in terms of coronary artery disease. And, and to some people's surprise, maybe as low as zero is, is tolerable and advantageous. As a society, we are attracted to the idea of having extraordinary abilities. But there are people who we rarely hear about and whose abilities are extraordinary as a result of combination of genetics, training, and other forms of adaptation. Granted, their superpowers don't include anything like the X-Men or their Avengers counterparts, but nevertheless, they are special. So let's look at some real-life examples of people with superhuman abilities. While scientists can't explain why Hulk's pants stay on when everything else shreds off, they do seem to have identified genes responsible for incredible strength, MSTN. When this gene is expressed in a normal person, the individual has incredibly strong muscles and can lift objects that would otherwise be beyond their reach. MSTN gene provides instructions for making a protein called myostatin. Eddie Hall, who won the World's Strongest Man 2017 competition, has a genetic mutation that causes myostatin-related muscle hypertrophy. This condition certainly contributed to his large muscle mass. People from the Bajo tribe, often referred to as sea nomads, can hold their breath underwater for as long as 13 minutes at depths of around 200 feet. Scientists studying them showed that the breath-holding ability of the Bajo is a genetic adaptation caused by natural selection. They have developed bigger spleens that allow them to store oxygenated blood, which increases their endurance at depth. Dutch extreme athlete Wim Hof is on the list not because of his genes, but of his skills. His talent to endure cold has been studied by scientists and seems to be a result of his ability to voluntarily influence his autonomic nervous system, something which was thought impossible. He got the nickname the Iceman by breaking a number of records related to cold exposure, including climbing Mount Kilimanjaro in shorts, running a half marathon above the Arctic Circle barefoot, and standing in a container while covered with ice cubes for almost two hours. He is able to increase the release of chemicals in the brain, called endocannabinoids, which create a sensation of euphoria to help numb the pain of the cold. According to him, over time, we as humans have developed a different attitude towards nature, and we've forgotten about our inner power. This is the ability of our body to adapt to extreme temperature and survive within our natural environment. We have hundreds thousand kilometers of blood vessels inside, uh, very primitive ones like capillaries, and then you have arteries and you have veins. They are all connected to the heart, we all know. Killer number one was 
cardiovascular related diseases in society. Why? Because all the cardiovascular related system and related organs and everything are very bad exercised. They contain millions of little muscles to help the blood flow go through. But because we wear clothes all the time, we destimulate. We have a destimulative kind of behavior, conditioned. So the muscles don't work as much. Who's got to pay for that? Your heart. Your heart needs to pump more to get the blood flow through because the tone of the muscles in the vascular system, that means millions of little muscles, they are not helping as much. So if you go into the cold shower, what happens? These little muscles begin to work. They begin to be stimulated. What happens more? Then the heart rate goes down with 20 to 30 beats a minute. And thus you get a lot more nutrients, oxygen and vitamins into the cells. That means a lot more energy. So much more energy and much less stress. That's the result of a cold shower a day. Consider this. A non-competitive, relatively in-shape runner usually completes one mile in about nine to ten minutes, while the fastest man on earth, Usain Bolt, set the world record of the 100-meter sprint at 9.58 seconds. Bolt reached a top speed of 27.33 miles per hour. The likelihood of becoming an elite sprint power athlete like Bolt is likely influenced by a handful of genes. Bolt carries at least one of the sprint variant of the ACTN3 gene. This gene controls the production of a protein that is found only in fast twitch fibers, which are the muscle fibers that give sprinters their speed. Super centenarians are people who have reached the age of 110. Research on the morbidity of super centenarians has found that they remain free of major age-related diseases such as cardiovascular disease, dementia and cancer until the very end of life. Scientists hope that in the future we can find a way to delay aging even by a very minor percentage in the population. This could have a profound impact on health and extended life expectancy. So how do we get these out from these rare individuals who happen to be lucky in the world to the rest of us? And a huge change, uh, CRISPR-Cas9 and, and other things that, that, that we and others have worked on, to, that enable us to engineer our genome. So our genes are no longer our destiny, they never were, but now you can not only change your environment, you can change your genetics. And this is done by engineering machines, protein machines, protein plus RNA, that will go in and find a needle in a haystack. In your six billion base pairs in your genome, these can go in and find one place to sit down and cleave and destroy that gene, in this case, or, or replace it with something that you like better. It has been argued that human evolution has accelerated since the development of agriculture 10,000 years ago and civilization some 5,000 years ago. Humans have yet to undergo any major biological changes since then, but as our technology changes, we are increasingly using it to change ourselves and the world around us. Within 30 years, it will probably be possible to make essentially any kind of change to any kind of genome, says Professor Jennifer Doudna of the University of California, Berkeley, who shared the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for her role in the development of CRISPR. You can imagine that, in the future, we are not subject to the DNA we inherit from our parents, but we can actually change our genes in a targeted way. Anatomically modern human populations continue to evolve, and they are affected by both natural selection and genetic drift. Thanks to the genomic revolution, researchers are now able to see changes in the human genome as they happen. There are several areas being looked into that could lead to radical change in the human genome, opening up a new area of research and development with further possibilities being realized if we can engineer them correctly. Radical change in the genome could enable us to vastly extend our life expectancy, give us superhuman abilities, and even transform us into something entirely different. However, the ethical, legal, and moral issues surrounding genetic engineering are significant and we need to consider all of them before we move forward. Thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Then show your support by subscribing and ringing the bell to never miss videos like this.